Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 7. I've been hanging out in the base area, chopping down trees, trying to clear out the area that leads up to this magnificent build we have here, as I want to get a feel for where the paths and whatnot are going to go. And as you can see, there's a portal on a tree over in the distance. What on earth could this mean? It means I've been busy making plans and preparations for all of our projects in the future. And that's actually what we're going to talk about in the beginning of this episode. However, first of all, we've been visited and left a gift from Beef, saying I'm not sure if this will come in handy, but it might. I tell you, my friend, for breeding the bees, it definitely will. Having some flowers on hand will be just perfect. And these orange tulips and rose bushes have been put to use inside of our farm. As you can see, I've been expanding it slowly. All of what we had on that side is being mirrored over here. The thing that I don't have at the moment is bees nests. So I'm going to have to do some bees nest farming. I've also changed some redstone up here. But that's all stuff we can talk about later when we're ready to crack on with this project. But now let's just hop on right past it. And as you can see I've been clearing out the area around the back here. And that's because we're going to do a massive expansion and build something that kind of dwarfs what we've already built. It's not the first thing we're going to do in this episode though. We're going to be talking about my plans for this entire area. To do that we're going to refer to this map of the jungle and I'm going to be placing down rough markers to show you where I want to put my projects and we're going to be considerate of our neighbours as well. My main tower is going to go somewhere around here. It's going to have my storage system in it. And when I say tower, most of these projects will end up being giant towers that rise up through the canopy of the jungle. Now we have a neighbor to the southeast, that is Kralis, and a neighbor to the northwest, which is Efo. And it just so happens that my slime farm is right next to where Efo is. But future projects are going to be located further away. So this is where our bee farm and skeleton farm is, somewhere underground. Eventually we're going to build a building on the surface for that, so that gives you a rough idea of where those are. Now me and Coralis have plans to work with villagers together. That involves trading with them, breeding them, doing crop farms. Our main villager area is actually going to be down here though, so that when I'm in my storage area or Coralis is in his base, it's not going to be loaded. But things like pumpkin farms, for example, where we need to get the resources to trade with them, we're going to put those sort of between us so we can both load them and then reap the benefits of those resources. Another farm we're both going to load together will be a creeper farm so we can get gunpowder for rockets. There'll probably be a sugarcane farm in this area as well. I'm also going to need like a furnace system at some point so that'll probably be a little mini project next to my main tower and then the last thing I'm going to show you for now, I have bigger plans than just this, is the iron farm. That's going to go all the way over there out in the west so it's not loaded all the time we're in a, the main area of the jungle and that's actually the project that we're going to work on this episode. So I've crafted up some rockets, we're going to fly around and check out the locations but first of all I was just reminded that I finished working on the bottom of this build down here. It looks seriously cool. And if you remember, it was just all left, all dug up and looking ugly. But now the build goes down into the ground. We've got some bone blocks at the back here, which look a little bit industrial in the darkness there. And all of this canopy you see below was actually placed by hand. I put all of these leaf blocks and logs in because we ripped it all out originally. And that's something I'm not going to do in the future. I want to keep the canopy down on the ground kind of makes it feel like the structure works more with the environment, right? When it goes all the way up to the edges and touches it. Anyway, more construction of these builds will come later on. Right now, we want to focus on our iron farm. And I am flying actually over to where you saw the villager farm on the map. And for the first few projects that I've mapped out, I've put portals here. And for some of them, they'll be useful and some of them not so much. A feature I want to have for my towers is like a bay that you fly into. So there'll be an open spot to fly across and land into, which means we probably won't need portals to get between all of them. But it's going to be very useful for the iron tower. And also the location is pretty good as well because it's high up on top of the tree and these things are all going to be towers. Let's now talk proximity. As you can see, the villager area and the bee farm would be loaded. And when we turn on our iron farm, we don't want to have these things loaded as well. We're actually going to be AFKing somewhere over here further away so we don't load those other projects. So where I've spread them out a bit, it means we're going to have individual AFK points so we can just load one farm at a time. 
So yeah, basically a lot of thought and consideration has gone into this. And as we fly over the bee farm, you'll see the other two portals that I've mapped out. We've got the creeper farm and then the location of my storage. And as you can see, they all have their equivalent portals on the opposite side above the bedrock roof. And now this area is populated with portals, which looks crazy. Also, what is Efo up to over here? Setting diamond blocks on fire? Oh, classic. My goodness me, was this easy to build? I've spent like probably about half an hour and got all of this done. Now, bear in mind I had all the resources in my ender chest backpack to help me put this together. But this is an iron farm designed by Nembom MC. I'm going to put a link to his video on it in the description box down below. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about how it works as we go along here. But all of the blocks are in place. Now we just need entities. We need three villagers in each of the corners. And then we're going to need to put a pillager that's been pacified in the very middle. And by pacified, I mean we remove its crossbow. And then this thing is going to spawn iron golems, and they're going to drop down below. Now, it needs to drop 32 blocks, and I didn't fancy digging out a load of the terrain down below. So this thing is above our portal, which means I should probably leave this here, actually. It would be a good idea to move the portal up there, as we're going to use the roof of the nether and this to get the villagers over here. And I'm hoping that will be super simple as well. Okay, so I've moved the portal upwards. The villagers that we bring through can only come out on this side. So I'm going to break these two blocks. That means that they're going to land in this space. And then when it turns to night, they're going to pathfind to the beds, which means we can get them into the correct spot. Once they've done that, we take away the dirt, we take away these fence posts, and they'll all, in the daytime, stand on that same block in the middle together and be contained in this space. So referring back to our map of the jungle, what we're going to do in the nether is traverse to the equivalent location of one of these villages over here. There is four of them. So we'll create a portal on the roof of the nether. It'll create one in the overworld, hopefully right in the middle of the village. I have just given myself something to think about here. Boats are kind of slow. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Oh, it is really slow. But I've got to do that so many times. Is there a better way to move villagers about? I thought this was a great idea. Here's the other thing. We could also get the boat on ice, but then things can spawn on the ice, which means we have to spawn proof it and make it so that the boat doesn't come off the ice because it moves crazy fast and all of that. I covered this entire thing with carpets and of course the boat actually has to touch the ice. So then I've gone and replaced it all with redstone. I'm wasting my time, but I still think it's going to be faster in the long run. And obviously I've got a villager. Then i got to do this. Oh, don't come off. Don't come off. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> oh, it is a fine balancing act. Okay, and then we're getting you close and closer. And, and you're safe. Brilliant. So I've kind of realized that villager wrangling, as I was calling it, is a little bit on the boring side when you're doing it. And I recorded some of me commenting on the things that I were doing like building a corridor with fence posts so the villagers could slowly walk towards the portal and I could trap them in, and other little tricks like using workstations to then lure the villagers over to their workstation, which is of course right next to the portal. Anyway, after the first village, the next one that I went to, the portal actually generated in the side of this building and it kept the banners on the side of it, which just amused me. I thought that was kind of funny. And then I had to get up to some shenanigans roaming around with villagers in boats. And after quite a bit of time, I then had a group of them here in the nether. And their hitboxes are showing. And we'll come back to that later as I learned something about using boats on ice. But eventually, I got them over to where we needed them to be. And it took a lot of time. But at night time, they also come through the portal and sometimes go straight over to their bed and then at other times they're really fussy and you have to push them all the way around but with a fair amount of effort eventually we got 12 villagers over here and we even had some iron golem spawns they would spawned and fall down onto the trees below so it looks like this thing's gonna work so yeah here it all is it's not quite finished just yet there's one missing piece to go in the middle Let's take a moment to just uh, appreciate all of these villagers standing on the same block together. It looks really strange when they do stuff like that. <laughs> it 
Anyway, do you know what's funny about this? I really need iron because I want to have a full-size beacon and be able to instant mine. And I've noticed something whilst working on the farm over here. I have my own form of a Led Zeppelin here. It's an iron parachute. <laughs> Mumbo Jumbo has dropped off some iron for me after we exchanged some honey with him. Oh my goodness me. Okay, so let's break the block in the middle. Oh, someone's fighting the wither. And then we can open this thing up. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. What a generous guy. Oh my days. If I'd have known he was dropping off this, I might have not have bothered with the iron farm straight away because that is going to last me a bit of time. Now, I mentioned the whole hitbox thing a moment ago. I find this useful on many occasions. Like if you're picking up items, it just helps you kind of spot them sometimes if there's a lot about. Another thing it helps me do here in the nether is actually use the boat. Now a little fun fact for you, when you place a boat, the direction you're facing is exactly the same as it will face. So if you can get it aligned perfectly on 90, just like that, in theory it goes in a straight line all the way to the end. But that's not the way that it works when you're turning left and right and you're dealing with villagers. So what I found is this blue line actually helps me to coordinate when I accelerate. And I find that you're going to tap left and right like this. But the best time to accelerate is when it's at its straightest. And then it kind of pushes you straight as opposed to actually left or right. Anyway, I hope that was useful to you. I, I found it interesting anyway. So remember the map from earlier? This is our jungle. Then we have our farming outpost over at this village. And then a little ways on, we have a pillager outpost. And I think I've seen evidence that maybe someone else has been here already. But what I've done this time is created a portal in the nether, not directly on top of this thing. You see, unlike the village, we don't actually want our portal to be right in the middle of where the pillagers are spawning. So this is out by about 10 blocks, which would translate to 80 in the overworld. So we should see the pillager outpost off in the distance. And if you look at my hotbar, you can see I've gotten myself prepared. Now, there is no ice road here in the nether <laughs> to take us back. It's just over there. I'm going to leave myself an arrow. And that is my artistic arrow pointing me back in the right direction. <laughs> so, yeah, no ice road because we can probably get the pillager to follow us. And when we're closer to the ice road, that's when we're going to try and capture it and then pacify it. Well, we got a pillager straight away. There's the building. Okay, dude. Go on. Go on. Walk into it. Just keep walking forward. Oh my god, that might have been the easiest ever. <laughs> There's no other pillager around. We just got one and it worked. Alright, dude, where did you go? Oh, it might have despawned because someone else is in the nether. I was just talking to Corallis. Yeah, so it would have instantly despawned, which reminds me, I also need to have a name tag prepared. Okay, another one, like just as easy as the first time, right? I was about to sleep because it's night time now. Okay, this time it should be better as no one's in the nether. And yes, that did the trick. Right, now you're going to continuously attack me at this point. I'm going to get you to come back in this direction and then we'll trap you in the area next to the ice. You know, I might as well just get this guy to wander all the way over to the portal and then we have less messing about with boats to do. Yeah, this is this is quite easy. Yep, you just you just stand right there, dude. This is all going very well. You have been captured. Despite my preparedness, I didn't put a minecart on rail together, which was going to be essential for keeping this guy in a single spot and having him shoot at me. Now, I am actually just going to stand like this now. <laughs> Cuz it'll do the job. Look, he's just shooting into the blocks. Now, what's the betting that that enchantment on its crossbow is unbreaking? <sighs> Now I should be good to just AFK because if he does actually manage to shoot me at one point it'll just knock me back off of where I'm standing and then I won't be taking any more damage so should be good. My friends it is a beautiful sound. Do you know what sound it is? The sound of silence. Your crossbow has broken my friend. You have shot too many arrows and it's time for us to get you into the overworld because you're going to scare our villagers into producing iron golems. So this went really smoothly to begin with. The pacified pillager 
doesn't really move anywhere or wander around so I just kept pushing it and pushing it and right at the end here things were going really well and I pushed it too much and fell into the little water trap here however I used an ender pearl to teleport out and uh, and then yeah we managed to push the guy in the middle and now my friends the real fun begins as we have iron golems and you know what I need a way to actually get rid of them but I was just thinking I've never built an iron farm in Minecraft before I'm pretty sure of it on Hermitcraft, they've always left it up to other people to do. You know, we've got Tango on here and Mumbo, and they absolutely love iron farms. And so someone else has already built a huge one in each of the seasons that we've played on. But this season, I wanted to be self-sufficient. And I've got to say, this has been a lot of fun. But anyway, time to chop down this tree. We're going to build a lava trap somewhere below it to kill all the iron golems. I've had the smart idea of blocking this off, because when they fall out of range of the villagers, then more of them can spawn so a group of them are going to cluster up there and then no more are going to spawn right because right now i got a bit of a situation down below <laughs> this isn't good i got iron golems everywhere so the good news is i've cleared them all out and the farm seems to be working in the daytime it feels like it's a little bit slower than when nighttime rolls around also i put some redstone on glass over here iron golems don't spawn on glass which is why the frame here is made out of it and if we hit that switch we can actually stop the farm from running as now the villagers won't see the pillager in the middle but when he's bobbing up and down in the water they do so that means this farm has an on-off switch also look at what's going on below here <laughs> it's like a giant tree yeah a giant tree chunk i had loads of jungle wood lying around from all the trees that i've been chopping and so that's what i went with now, here in the nether, I've just discovered this guy who has managed to survive obsidian and bedrock. What a legend. <laughs> oh, that is really quite amusing. Also, I should take this because sign can spawn on it. Jeez. And with our iron, we can make a beacon base and get haste to, and then clear out the second floor of the slime farm. Put in a golem up the top here that's going to attract the slimes. They're going to fall down, see the one at the bottom go into the magma blocks. And also fill up an entire shulker box with stone. This is a building material that I need for another temporary farm we're going to construct. And that, my friends, is going to be a creeper farm. So now you're probably wondering, what on earth is all of this around me here? Well, first of all, just got to say a massive thank you to Mr. Nembom MC. Great guy, wonderful videos. He makes really useful mods for Minecraft, and he's kind enough to ping pong ideas back and forth with me. And so discussing this creeper farm that I was going to build, he reminded me of some really important stuff and gave me a script that can generate this sphere right here. So what we've got to think about is where the player is going to stand. And because of this, our design is actually going to go from one tower to two towers. We're going to have a creeper farm on one side and a creeper farm on the other. So the glass here represents the range at which mobs won't spawn. But as soon as there's glass, that's where they'll be able to when I'm standing over there. And then when the glass ends, that's the range at which the mobs won't move. So if they spawn over here and they're not moving, they're not going to be a part of our farm. So we kind of have to build it in this range of the sphere. So you can see I've hollowed out a bit here and our design is going to go a little bit higher and a little bit lower. And then we're going to have one on this side, one on that side over there. And in the future, build some sort of crazy double tower combo with a platform in the middle. But anyway, this is the design. It's pretty simple. If I throw down the pink carpet, it tells us what mobs can spawn here. You can see that skeletons and creepers and endermen can spawn. The trick we need is to put the trapdoor on the roof. So this is where the second floor starts, just like we have below. We've got these stone bricks. That's why I was gathering loads of stone, because we're going to build it out of this material. And then with these trapdoors, only creepers will be able to spawn in this space. As you see there, it says creeper uh, can fit and will spawn so these other carpets are to stop spiders from spawning and with this layout here eventually the creepers are just going to wander somewhere they'll wander over the trap doors and fall down into our trap and so here you can see the finished product i've stacked up the floors of the creeper farms many times put them on either side and now i'm ready to build this on hermitcraft and you know what they say, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I've actually put down the foundations for this now. So we've got our AFK spot over there, and then we've got the base platform, that for height, so I know I'm building it in the exact correct spot. And then same over here, because we're building two of them. 
It also made me think that we could build another two towers, maybe for different types of mobs on either side and make it into some big complex. Now, this isn't going to be made out of stone bricks for decoration. This is like the interior bit, and we're going to build a shell around the outside. It'll look really cool. But anyway, the first thing I want to do this time, unlike the iron farm, is actually build the part where the creepers fall down and get killed, because if I don't do that first and I start building this thing, yeah, we might have creepers dropping down here onto the jungle. So back to the slime chunk, working on another level here <laughs> and getting a healthy supply of stone because I've used all of the blocks that we saw a moment ago and we're probably going to end up using maybe two or three more shulker boxes in total. So I believe at the beginning of the video I was hinting that we were going to be building in this location here. That was always the plan but then priorities kind of changed and this is what I've done so far. We've built the base of these towers where the creepers are going to fall down and the rest is just going to have to get done at another time because this has taken an extraordinary amount of time. But in the next episode we will indeed get into some proper building because, you know, the stone bricks ain't to stay. There's going to be a facade around the outside that'll be far more interesting. But anyway, this is where we're going to be wrapping this one up. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. As always, thank you so much for your support in this series, and I'll be seeing you very soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.